Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Annalise and it has been a year since I have come out publicly as a lesbian. And I thought that I would talk about the struggles and the good things that have happened to me since coming out. So in today's video, I'm dividing this into four categories. We're going to talk about my mental health, how people reacted, dealing with homophobia and my dating life. So without further ado, let's just get on into it and kick this off with talking about mental, my mental health since coming out. So this time last year I was so incredibly scared to post the video coming out as gay and I was also scared to tell people in my real life a couple of weeks before that honestly I wasn't really ready to come out at that time I was still trying to decide if I was bi or full lesbian which I am full lesbian just to clarify but I did have some people in my life pressuring me to come out so and the reason that I wasn't too sure is because after you know being told my entire life by society everyone family friends just everyone that I like men it's kind of difficult to fully accept that I don't don't like men at all and I was still trying to come to that decision but was pressured by people in my life to make this video and tell everyone before I was ready which kind of sucked so I probably would have waited another month or so but honestly I'm glad that I made the video when I did because I am so much happier now I literally cannot even explain that after putting out that video it was like a massive weight had been lifted off my shoulders and I really didn't even realize how much of myself I had been hiding from not only you guys but my friends and family in real life as you guys know, I have depression and anxiety. I've had it for many years and I'm probably going to have it for the rest of my life and I've been in therapy for it for many years. But I didn't realize how much hiding my true self and not being my true authentic gay self was affecting me and I was it was like putting up a wall between everyone in my life and myself and I wasn't able to even express my true personality so coming out really helped with that it really helped with my depression because a couple of weeks before coming out I was in one of the darkest places of my life I had to go stay with my parents for a couple of weeks because I was just absolutely miserable and just in the lowest low I've ever been and, and since coming out I have not been back to that point which is absolutely amazing. Now let's talk about how everyone reacted over the past year. So when I first came out my family was all incredibly accepting. My mom and dad, well my stepdad but I just say dad, my mom and dad were incredibly accepting. They were shocked, they were very shocked because from their eyes it came from absolutely nowhere and I'm pretty sure for a while there they thought I was going to be like oh psych I'm actually straight but nonetheless they were incredibly supportive and still are to this day and I'm just so incredibly blessed for them blessed to have them not blessed for them I'm blessed to have them <laughs> at the time of coming out all of my closest friends were girls I didn't really have any guy friends back then and two of my closest friends that were girls for some reason in their brains thought that okay Annalise is a lesbian so that means that Annalise is in love with me and has been in love with me this entire time I'm like wait hey no that's not what that means <laughs> it's like just because I'm gay doesn't mean that I'm into every single woman like no and especially at the time when I came out my type was like masks who I covered in tattoos and these were two super girly girls but they were literally like acting different towards me they were saying that I was into them to my face saying that I was into them and that they need to be careful around me now and I was just I was absolutely gutted like that was the worst case scenario I could ever imagine I'd never been into them let me just clarify that right now never ever been into them never been seen them as anything other than platonic and they just weren't able to even view it that way so I cut them out of my life because I am so dedicated to just living a happy healthy life and dedicated to my inner peace and if anyone wants to come in and disrupt that they are not allowed I am not letting them and I will cut them off easily so that it was really I'm saying this now because it was like a year ago at the time I was absolutely gutted I was like bawling my eyes out and just absolutely miserable because it was the worst case scenario and it made me feel like such an outsider and I absolutely hated that but I have not spoken to those girls pretty much since that day when they told me that and I have no plans to talk to them ever again which leads me into the next topic of dealing with homophobia over the last year so Oh, I've dealt with so much of it, which I didn't expect. I always thought that Australia was a super accepting country, and it is, but it's still got a long way to go. And lately, I've just been getting a bit exhausted with someone being homophobic towards me, me being like, hey, I don't like that, and everyone being like, well, maybe you should just move on and accept it and move on and be polite. And that's not me. I am <laughs> I am not one to just sit down and be quiet, okay? If you're mean to me, I'm not just going to cop it. I'm an Aries with a Leo rising. And I think one of the best examples of this is something that happened last year but then came up again recently. So I did talk about this on my vlog channel when it happened. But last year, I think it was like November last year, I went to a party and I'd only recently broken up with my ex. And this was like one of the first parties I'd gone to as gay without like... 
uh, my partner there with me. So I was a bit nervous, but all was well. I knew some friends there, and I was in like the main party area when this guy came up to me, and I can't remember if he either hit my ass or my friend's ass, and I was like, that's not on, you can't do that. Like, you can't just go up and like, you know, do that to women. No, don't do that. And he looked me dead in the eyes and said, well, whatever, f and I was absolutely gobsmacked and mortified. I was in a room of all these people that I didn't really know that well. And I've just had someone call me a slur. And I was, yeah, I, oh, I'm getting like emotional thinking about it. Just because it was so upsetting to me that someone could be so horrible and just throw a slur in my face like that. The worst part was that no one stood up for me at that party except for my one friend, Keely, who I'm still friends with to this day. But no one else said anything. Everyone was so quick to, oh, I'm like getting upset, but everyone was so quick to justify this man's actions and defend his actions, saying that it's, he didn't know I was gay, which I called it on out there are like let's say 30 people at this party and you just call the one gay person he knew i don't care what anyone says i know that he did that to try and hurt me and it worked i was hurt so i hadn't seen this man since and a couple of months ago i was meant to go watch the footy at my friend's house and i found out that this man was going and so i told my friends i'm not going because i don't want to see him i don't want to be in the same room as a homophobe and everyone was like you're being dramatic that's not gonna happen i'm like i'm actually not because People don't understand what it feels like. I mean, a lot of people watching this will definitely understand. Uh, that's what I mean. I mean, in this group of friends, they just didn't get it and didn't understand how upsetting that was to me. And they told me that I need to play nice. I need to play nice with a guy that had a go at me and called me a slur. Needless to say, I am not friends with those people anymore. This sort of thing seems to keep happening over and over again where the man is mean and homophobic, but I've just got to deal with it. And that's not how I play. That's not how I play. I am not about that. I will stand up for myself and I will stand up for my friends. And if you don't like it, leave because I'm still going to be gay. <laughs> you know, no matter what homophobic things people say to me, I am still going to be gay and it's not going to change it. If anything, I'm going to start wearing rainbows. It just sucks dealing with these sort of situations in 2021. And I feel like the reason I'm telling you guys about this is because a lot of people think that this sort of stuff doesn't happen anymore, but it definitely a hundred percent still does. And it always leaves me, oh, oh, oh this is kind of, like, kind of saying it, but it always leaves me feeling so alone and so empty. But anyway, let's move on from that topic that was like really heavy and let's talk about my dating life because oh my goodness, it has been a wild ride in the past year. So in my coming out video, I had a girlfriend. I'm obviously not with her anymore, although famous birthdays still list them as my partner. But it is absolutely crazy to me that if I hadn't come out, I really was going to date a man and marry a man. That was my plan. I was just gonna hide this part of myself forever and just date a man and marry a man and just deal with it. And if we hadn't gone into lockdown last year, I don't think I ever would have come out. The only reason I did is because, you know, it felt like the world was ending in lockdown and I was like, life is too damn short not to be my most real and authentic self. And that's when I decided to come out. And I'm so glad that I did. It is literally the best thing I have ever done. Although I will say, I still hate dating. It does not get better. <laughs> like, even though I was like dating, I was in the closet and I'm not, I was in the closet. I don't know why I did that. I was in the closet and dating straight men. It does not get better when you're dating and you're gay. Ah, oh, dating still sucks. I mean, first of all, no one ever knows that I'm gay because I don't, because as a femme, I don't look typically gay, which is so silly. But so the only way I ever meet people are on dating apps, which I'm on them all. So if you ever see me, yes. That's me, like, hi, swipe right, but I'm on all dating apps, or if a friend rarely introduces me to a friend, but dating in Brisbane sucks because everyone knows each other, all lesbian, bi, anything like that, they all know each other, like, if I go on a date with one girl, she knows the past five girls I've been on a date with, and I'm like, ah, oh, fantastic, like, it's just, I hate that so much. And I think the best way, to, the best story about like no one knowing that I'm gay is recently I was at a gay club in Brisbane and I was literally holding hands with a girl and another girl came out to me. She's like, oh, are you two straight? And I was like, holding this girl's hand. I'm like, obviously not. Like we're in a gay club holding hands. We are not straight. But yeah, no one ever wants to believe that I'm gay. So whatever. Anyway, my dating life. So I obviously had my girlfriend that I was seeing for, uh, how long did I see her for? Like five months, I think it was. But I broke up with her in November, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, seeing her for about five months. And then since then I've had like two situationships, but nothing too serious. I haven't been seeing, I, like I'm still single now and I haven't been seeing anyone since 
probably March, I think it was. Like, I've been on, I'm always going on dates. I'm always going on dates here and there. But there's no one that I've met yet that I'm like, oh, yeah, girlfriend material. You know what I mean? And it's nothing against these people. Oh, my God. Like, at all. A lot of them have been girlfriend material, actually. And it's just been the things haven't worked out. You know, timing wasn't right, moving and all that jazz. Like, life happens. Life is hard. It's hard trying to get through adults to date. You know what I mean? So I am not someone though that needs a relationship. I am totally a hundred by myself. And if one day I still end up alone and I don't end up finding a wife, I mean, I kind of do want a wife one day, but <laughs> if I do end up alone, it won't be the worst thing in the world. And I know I will be totally fine. I know that I'm a strong, independent woman. I've made my own business. I work for myself and I know that I can take care of myself. So I will be a okay. But uh, were there any crazy dating stories over the past year? Oh my goodness, I have so many. I literally have the worst of luck dating. So, what's something that's happened recently? Let me think. Oh my god, there was this one girl. <laughs> one girl recently. I wanted a date with her on, I think it was, let's say, a Sunday. We just went on, it was only one day. We just went on one day. Date went well. It was really good, whatever. We talked about seeing each other again. But she did tell me that as soon as the borders open, like um the borders to New Zealand open, she was moving there. She told me this straight up. I was like, yeah, amazing. No worries. We're both thinking like, oh, won't be for a couple of weeks. Saw her on the Sunday. The Monday the borders open, the Tuesday she was gone. And she moved the country. So that's why on my Instagram I keep saying funny things that are like, oh, fun fact, anyone who meets me moves to New Zealand because that happened. And then that next weekend, my friends and I went out to a club and they found me this girl that we all thought was cute. And I was talking to her and she's like, oh my God, you're so beautiful, but I'm so sorry. I'm moving to New Zealand tomorrow. So I was two girls in one week that were gay, met me and then moved to New Zealand. So it's just become a joke amongst my friends and I that any girl Annalise meets is actually moving to New Zealand. So I think it's funny. I mean, there's no, nothing against either of those people. There's, it was literally one date and I just think it is hilarious. Another bad date I went on recently, the girl told me that she has a severe drug addiction and then proceeded to spend all of her money on the pokies. And I don't, I'm not a gambler. I do not gamble at all. And I was just sitting there like, so I gotta go. I have work tomorrow. I didn't have work tomorrow. I work for myself. I make my own hours. But I was like, I gotta go. I have work tomorrow. It's so lovely to meet you. Like, I'm, <laughs> it just wasn't right. Wasn't for me. But yeah, dating is, ugh, I hate it. I hate dating. It's the worst. But the good thing is with girls, girls are usually pretty lovely, you know. So I've made actually some of my good friends <laughs> that I've, like, we met on Tinder and we're now good friends. So, you know. Everything is as it should be and the universe always has a plan. So in conclusion, I think if I could go back to myself a year ago and tell myself anything, it would be that everything is as it should be. That's my favorite quote. I want to get it tattooed on me. But everything is as it should be. Everything will be okay. And a lot of your friends are secretly homophobic because I really did not know that. But anyone that's thinking about coming out, I really hope that it goes well for you. Obviously, I have quite a lucky story. A lot of people don't have as many accepting people in their lives as I did which is extremely unfortunate so my DMs are always open and I just wanted to tell y'all that I feel so much happier so much more confident and just like I'm able to be my true self and life's too short not to be your true self. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to the sponsor of today's video Squarespace. So Squarespace gives a beautiful and powerful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. You can also manage your members, send email notifications and leverage audience insight all on one easy to use platform you can also create a community on your squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system this supports threaded comments replies and likes. you can also use their tools to categorize schedule and share your posts as well you can also extend squarespace's already powerful e-commerce abilities with squarespace's extension these new third-party tools can help you to manage inventory promote products streamline bookkeeping reconcile and file sales tax and ship items across the globe you can also display posts from your social profiles across your website. You can also automatically push website content onto your social media channels so that your followers can share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Annalise Wood to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you so much again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and to you guys for supporting Squarespace because that in turn supports me. So thank you. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to follow me on all of my social medias. They are on the screen right now and also link down below along with my vlog channel and if you are still watching be sure to comment down below i am moving to new zealand because that's the funniest thing i think that has ever happened to me i love you guys so so much and i will see you in my next video bye Mwah.